I was confident going into the series. I'm still confident, even actually probably more confident because they played a game in which they didn't deserve to win and still found a way to win that game. Uh, but they they were confused uh, defensively, I thought they had a, a big problem dealing with the pick and roll. I thought that they got bailed out multiple times by the officials. There was too many calls on both sides. It was just there was really not a lot of flow for teams that were playing up and down. There was there wasn't a lot of flow because of all the whistles. I thought that they got suckered into the pace of the Pacers, no pun intended, uh, but they've got the best player in the series and Jalen Brunson when the fourth quarter was not going to lose and his two teammates from Villanova were right there flanking him to make sure that that wasn't going to happen with the garden crowd and everything else. So it, it really could have been the most impressive win that they had because they didn't have it last night. They, they, they really did not. There were multiple times I thought the Pacers were going to leave the Knicks in their dust, and they kept coming back, coming back, coming back, and Jalen Brunson did what he did, another 40-point game. He's now the first guy in the history of the postseason to have the four 40-point games in a row, also with five assists, uh, which, is, which is nuts. Uh, but this, this, this game scared me. And I, I do believe, and it's lucky that they got out of there with a win last night, because I think you're going to see major adjustments from Tibbs going forward, because they can't play the same game that they did last night and expect to win this series. Yeah, it's interesting, because I took it in a different way. I, I thought the way they played in the first quarter, specifically defensively, disrupted Indiana um, several different ways. Indiana was dying to just shoot threes, and the Knicks weren't going to let them do it, and they were up on Every man defensively. I mean, there were there were sets in the first quarter of this game that Indiana looked visibly frustrated that they couldn't shake free. And I thought they made the adjustment with the pick and roll. And then all of a sudden things started to open up for them. So I do agree the Knicks are gonna have to adjust back now for whatever happens going forward. But I think really good teams do really good things, make big shots, and yeah, get some breaks along the way. There's no question about it. The kickball. Um, terrible call. And I think they even admitted that. And again, once again, with these post game reports, right. they admit that that was a mistake. Um, the offensive foul is an offensive foul. That is a moving pick. He is yeah. not set. You want to tell me that you don't <laughs> know, call it man. in that spot? That's fine. I won't argue with you. And I'm the first one to get on officials. But he is clearly not right. set. You're right. By, He's by, not. by the book, that is totally right. But let, let's just talk for a minute. I'm, I'm trying to be fair here. Sure. Because if that happened to the Knicks, I would be furious. So think about that the, the play where Tyrese Maxey in game two twice was getting tugged at and no calls were made. The Knicks came Agreed. back with that crazy. I agree. It, it, that, so that was a late in the Different. game, let them play situation. Different game. But then in, in this game, there, there were too many whistles. So I, I, I agree. They, they did set the standard. They were going to call everything for the entire game. It was so also guess, incredibly physical. Right. You could, you could say that there was consistency there, but I just thought in that situation that it was like, man, you, and even I saw Brian Windhorst talk about it this morning when I was in my office. He's like, I've watched a lot of basketball. I have never in a playoff game in the fourth quarter seen them call that. My point is not that they should have or should not have called it. My point is if you're going to say they got away with one, the kickball, they got away with yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, sure. This, to me, by the book, is a foul. I would not have called it. I'll be very clear about that. I want them to play. I think, I think, I think it was Miles Turner that said, you want the players deciding these games. I agree with him 100%. But it's not like they had to come out and say, mm, our bad wasn't an offensive foul. It really was. It was an offensive foul. The Knicks, I don't want to say got lucky. They didn't get lucky. Well, I mean, DiVincenzo book, sold it, too. I mean, that, yes. that's part of it. Well, DiVincenzo I mean, looked like he got run over by a Mack truck. Right. And then Jalen Brunson's been great at that as as well as selling these, these charges. So, I mean, I, I just. Yes. But but here's this is my point. You had the kickball. They got away with one. That's fine. The offensive foul to me is an offensive foul. Didn't have to call it. They did. And the challenge by Tibbs on the ball had a bounds. If he doesn't challenge that or doesn't have a challenge, and that's Indiana's ball, that's a one-point game with yeah. 20 seconds to go right. that went their way, sure, but only because the officials made the mistake and they had the challenge in their pocket. And I also thought, just to be fair, with the first glance, and I mean, there's been a, there was a lot of negative Knicks things last night, in my opinion. You know, that, that Tibbs challenge with Jalen Brunson and the foul mm -hmm. that they overturned shocked the hell I, out I, of me. I agree. I agree.
So there there was a bunch of breaks in this game that I, I could have seen go the other way that if I were an opposing fan, either of the Sixers or the Pacers, I would be saying, man, I, I, I guess maybe the NBA does want the Knicks to move on to the conference finals and take on the Boston Celtics because th- this is this is nuts. Now, I, going forward, I don't think you're going to see a lot of the same stuff because I, I Rick Carlisle is a great coach. We know that he's been around forever. But seeing what they saw last night, I am fully confident that Tibbs is going to find a way to make sure that the Indiana Pacers don't get as many easy baskets as they did in the second half of this game. And I know that they've been a top scoring team and it's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. But and, and this is another part of this. Tyrese Halliburton, one of their best players, did nothing. Only took six shots. Nothing last night. So you, yeah. you can't expect that to happen. But I think Siakam, once he got into the paint, it was way too easy for him to score. This McConnell kid was tremendous. TJ McConnell's always been a pain in the ass Man. for for the Knicks. He's just one of those like the guys that has always been uh, playing at his best. And he had a great game six against the Bucks. I know. As well. So, yeah, I just thought it was too easy for them. And and you're right. In the beginning of the game, when you're seeing blocks and steals and defense and, and smothering, I'm thinking, like, this is exactly what I was saying on the show, that the Indiana Pacers didn't experience this that much at all in the regular season certainly didn't experience it in the buck series and the Knicks are just going to clamp down on this team and it's going to get ugly that's what I thought was going to happen but man I mean there there was a point there you know where the 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 Knicks are down nine in the second half it was what uh fourth quarter fourth quarter about 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter and and I, I I I thought it was over at that point I gotta be honest with you all the faith that I've had in the team was gone at that moment with the way the game had gone. Mm-hmm. And and then really what it was is is once again, I mean, it was it was Jalen Brunson. Now we talk about the ball moving and how great he is at facilitating, and he did, and he had that assist to DiVincenzo, but I mean, uh, that was really all on DiVincenzo. That was a, a, a three from I mean what he how, does. I mean, that was that was that was a deep three. Yep. So but Jalen Brunson in a lot of these moments going to the basket, getting the foul calls when the Pacers were in and the making penalty, his free throws. Making every free throw. Uh, making every jump shot. He was I mean, about fourteen of fourteen from the line and some I mean clutch free throws in the final minute. Yeah, I, but it's, here's the thing. I don't want him to have to save the day like that every time. Well, but Dante DiVincenzo also saved the day, he too, did. by hitting a three-pointer from five, five feet behind he, the he line. He did. But, I mean, that that fourth quarter was yeah. on on the back of Jalen Brunson, which which is great. And he's he's been awesome. But it, it was almost I, – I, I just – But you know what? If it's not for Josh Hart for the first three quarters, if it's not for DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi hit big shots. Um, I know it is what it is, a, a half-court shot, you know – not that it mattered because uh, Indiana did again build the lead back up, but the Knicks are about to go into the half down seven, and I thought they played actually yeah, a pretty I good know. first half. And then Hartenstein hits that three pointer from right around mid court, and you think, hey, a little bit of momentum. They made plays last night, and that might be one of them too. And I do believe that to beat the Pacers, the Pacers are going to score. We talked about this the other yeah. day. The question is, do they score less than one twenty, or do they put up? 140. If they're putting up 140, you're losing. Yeah, there's you, no way. You hold them in the 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 100s, the one teens. I think the Knicks win because I think defensively what they will do will be enough, and they will find the offense. Yeah, and this this was a. It felt like the Knicks were stunned at times in this game with with the the offensive aptitude of yeah. the Pacers, and, See, I, I, and thought, I didn't like that at all. I thought that both ways. I thought the Pacers were stunned that the Knicks kept coming back, and I felt like the Knicks were stunned that every time you look up, my God, they're still winning. Right, and what, what it's going to come down to, and by the way, there was, it, especially you know when the Pacers started to come back and then had the lead, uh, they were rebounding better yes, than the Knicks. and much better than what the Knicks saw in the Sixers series, much better. And, and, but that was supposed to be a huge advantage for the Knicks in this series, and, and, it, and it was not. So yes, I, I do think that the the Pacers were like, oh my God, like I we we've played so well, we should be winning by fifteen at this point. How the hell are we not being able to kill this team? But what happened in the final couple of minutes when the Knicks desperately needed an offensive rebound? There was Josh Hart, Hart knocking a back big out. offensive rebound. Yep. Yes, and also had the putback. Yeah, also had the offensive rebound well, yeah, to put it back up and in. Too. Yeah, I mean so. 
you're right. And even uh, Brian Anderson and Stan Van Gundy many times throughout the course of the broadcast were talking about how, wow, the Knicks only have two offensive rebounds. And if you go back to what how they just murdered the Sixers on the, on the boards in the last series, it was surprising. But when they needed to make plays, they made plays. And that's what great teams do. Yeah. And it, it felt like so it, Boomer's... Uh, Boy, Precious Achua did did come into the game. Didn't have much of an impact, but he he was in there. <laughs> I do think that you 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 need to to use more of the bench. And I th- like what drove me crazy was that like bench point stat that they kept putting well, up silly. on TNT. They're, these are two completely different teams. Mm-hmm. The Pacers, the guys who come off the bench, sometimes play more minutes than the starters. Anyway, like it's just it's just a silly stat. Right. Uh, but the the bigger point is the fact that the, the 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 Pacers with the way that they play and there's more fresh bodies and more of a rotation it could catch up to them with the pace of play that you had last night. It might, and I, I know a lot of people have been on this. I look at the Knicks as probably the best conditioned team in the NBA because this is the way they have played all season long. You want to tell me they're going to get burnt out in the next series, the series after that, I suppose. But if your adrenaline doesn't take over, as you're making deeper runs in the postseason, I don't know when it would. I I do not get concerned about the minutes like everybody else. Has Josh Hart lost half a step? No, and it's not it's not so much of of that as it is like the over the course of this particular Maybe. series. Like in any one game, I don't feel that it's that way, but I and I haven't felt it yet, but I just was thinking last night if it continues because they were also they were playing at the Pacers' pace. Like I didn't like that at all. Like the the Pacers were playing their game, and the Knicks were catching up to them, and they did finally catch them and get by them because they're just they just know how to win. But what does that go to show you? Like the Pacers played their game and lost. Well, that's why I said I think this, even with all the things that I brought up that were concerning, that it could be the Knicks' most impressive win because. They the, the the Pacers were better, and the I, I do have to admit there were several times though that I felt like the Knicks got bailed out several times. So I, that's not going to happen every well maybe it does happen every game because finally I'm rooting for a team that the NBA wants to see too well. Perhaps like, you know it's, it kind of feels that way uh, that the that there might be a little bit of a slant towards the Knicks when it comes to the officiating. So whatever help you can get. Uh, but the fact that they got through this now, th- because of what happened last night does not change my confidence in the series. It actually gives me a little bit more confidence because I do think that they are going to make the adjustments. Um, but but I was I, I was last night. I was like, oh, boy, this is this is not the way I expected this well, to go. I mean, theoretically, things are supposed to get harder each step of the way. So yeah, and this is, I th- love this matchup for the Knicks. And I thought that the Sixers were better. They had more stars, the Sixers. And I just I loved this matchup on paper for them. Yeah, I, I think the fact that Embiid wasn't 100 percent makes it different. I think this is the better team right now. I do. I think Indiana. They, we talked about this the other day. This is a team that can light it up for 150 on any given night, and they did it, I think, six times this year. So we know that if the, if they hit threes, they're going to score a lot. There's no question about that. The question for me is, can the Knicks disrupt them enough like they did last night to keep them down early? I mean, you were looking at the first quarter. I forget what, it, what exactly it turned out to be, but I think with like three minutes to go in the first quarter, the Pacers had like 17 points. Like, that's not a Pacers quarter. Now, they wound up with, I think, tw- was it tied to 27 maybe because they got into a little yeah. flurry there late in the first quarter. But I just think we're going to find out over the course of the series, which I don't think goes more than six games, to be quite honest with you. I think the Knicks win this thing in six. Um, I, you're going to find out if defense travels and if defense is more important in this day's NBA. Clearly in the 90s, it was all about defense. Basketball in the 2020s is all about the three-point shot and offense. Are the Knicks good enough defensively to disrupt them just enough to where they they take four out of five, six, or seven? Yeah, I, I still think the Knicks win in five. I think it's sort of a similar situation that you had in the Sixers series, but I do think in the game five back of the garden, they end up winning the game. And if you're a Pacers fan, you're like, man, we let one get away. We could have come in there to the garden, stolen game one, you know, gotten home court advantage essentially back 
into our favor. I mean, Obi Toppin with the between that the legs was, dunk and then a big yeah. three in the fourth quarter. I Not mean, only him, do you see the Naismith dunk? Oh, my God, I know. That was... I mean, these guys, the Toppin one is ballsy, too. I know to do that, especially at the Garden, because he did that and missed in the Milwaukee series. That's a close game. Did the game. same exact yes. thing. And he, done, and he got it to go, and it was pretty impressive, and it was a highlight reel dunk, but geez. Yeah, I mean, he he's feeling himself and screaming and the whole deal, and I just... I, I was I, I was I was not in a good mental place last night watching this I game. It. I, I really it. was not. At the end of the day, this felt very much like the Sixers game that you thought Philly played their best game or gave them their best shot and it wasn't good enough. I'm not saying that was Indiana's best shot, but it was pretty damn close and it still wasn't good enough. Very, very different, yet very similar. Yeah. And this is where I, I, I I'm hoping. Uh, and that they're not going, we're not going to have a scare like this again. They might, they're going to drop one game. I got to give the Pacers respect there. They'll drop at least one game, the Knicks. But I, I think in there, I, I don't think it's going to have to take a Herculean effort in the fourth quarter every single time to beat this Indiana Pacers team. And you saw the adjustments that were made after the first two games in the Sixers series to get Jalen Brunson to the point where he has now had these 40 point games in a row they're gonna have to do that and they're gonna have to do it at the defensive end and Tibbs is the best in the business when it comes to that stuff and we'll see the chess match with Carlisle and Tom Thibodeau back and forth and and for those that you know the JJ Reddicks of the world who were like X's and O's basketball freaks uh will be into that part of it but it'll be interesting well, I'll give you an X and O before we go to break why do they hit that why does that three for DiVincenzo, why is it there? If you watch the replay, and there was a great overhead replay, too, of it, the defender didn't know what to do. Do you double Brunson? Do you stay on DiVincenzo? Once Brunson makes his move, he sprints to him because Brunson's not a ball hog, finds the open DiVincenzo. Now, a guy came out and defended him, but he was far enough back and had enough space. It's an it's about as open a look as you're going to get with a, with a guy in the vicinity. 